Hey you guys, I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted to share with you another enclosure upgrade. So the last one was upgrading my Firebelly Toad tank and it turned out so beautiful. I absolutely love it. I think that it is just amazing. I'm thrilled with it. And I was like, hopefully this beautiful uh, everything put togetherness carries into the other upgrades that I'll be doing, of which there are many. And uh, the biggest enclosure upgrades won't come till last. They are the most expensive, the most time consuming, they're the leopard gecko enclosures. But that's not what this video is about today. Today, this video, as you saw in the title and the thumbnail, is about updating my fire skink enclosure. The previous enclosure was a 40 gallon breeder with no lid. It had a mega ray UVB and heat bulb. It had a bunch of eco earth and it had a few pieces of cork bark and that's it. And a little like tiny water container that was like a Tupperware container. So it was to say the least, not on the pretty side. But fortunately, the upgrade is so much more beautiful. I have put a lot more time into decorating it and into making it look and also feel for the skink, like an actual environment and not just eco worth and some cork bark. Without further ado, this is my skink's new enclosure and roll. Okay, everyone, this is my fire skink's enclosure. Now, I'm gonna give you a more in-depth look here in a second, but I just wanted to show you the whole thing. And I also want to note that this is not what it will look like in a few days. The main difference that I want to make is that I do not like these plants right here. I don't like them. This one's okay, but this one, that one, and those two, I don't like them. <laughs> and I'm gonna get another fern, a smaller one to go up here, and I'm gonna get this plant um, over here. So it'll take up that space. But anyways, let's give you a nice in-depth look. So the first thing I want you to note is these little tiny holes. That's actually where the skink has burrowed. So he, well, sometime today was over there. But we'll start in this side with the giant cork round hide that also has like this little floop, like it goes up. And I have buried some of the eco earth on it to make it like mesh with the enclosure more, make it look like actually one environment instead of just cork bark sitting on top of eco earth. And that also makes like a lot of substrate in some areas where he can really enjoy burrowing. As you can see, it's a few inches of substrate to begin with and he's still little, so this is plenty of substrate for him. But that offers a nice hide back in there. As you can see, it's nice and dark. And look, there's another hole back there where I'm sure he burrowed. And, like I said, plenty of substrate for him to burrow in because fire skinks are a burrowing species. They love to burrow and you have to offer enough substrate to do that. So aside from this main hide that he has here, it also serves the purpose of like a basking platform. This, I still want to build up some more to get closer to his light right here. But the temperatures are okay as is. I just think it might be nicer to have a little bit more of a build up here. So I'll get more eco earth and do that. However, the temperature needs to be between 90 and 94 degrees is what I read. Some say 92 to 95 degrees. I say anything in the low 90s probably will work. And his reach is exactly 90 degrees. In addition to this heat, he also has an under tank heater, which you obviously cannot see since it's underneath. It covers from about here to here, I would say and it covers almost the entirety of the bottom, I would say, maybe except for a few inches like in the front and a few inches in the back. So it's nice and centered. The thermostat is back through here. You can't see it. It obviously is behind the background and then I pulled it out through here before putting the substrate in. And if I were to unbury it, let's see if I can find it. There you can see like the little silver piece of it there. That is on top of the heater. Oh, I just <laughs> messed up a lot of substrate. Get it out of his bowl. And as you can see, it's wet substrate underneath. So spraying it daily, I spray this twice a day, once in the morning and once at night to offer enough humidity because they also are a species that like humidity, but the substrate has to stay moist and it shouldn't really get like super dry or anything like that. Anyway, so there's the probe that I showed you a minute ago and I have his heater set to 87 degrees, I believe. So, yep, 87 on the thermostat right there. And this, Enclosure should always be in the high 80s. They like it warm. Of course, he has this area over here to cool down if you wanted to, or even back here where there's no heater. But this area right here is a nice warm spot. It can be warm underneath his hide. And of course, he has this light over here for during the day for warmth over here. So aside from heating and his hide, like his main hide, there's also some hiding area here with this really cool piece of driftwood that I got from PetSmart. I just really like the bend of it and like the cool little knobby piece. And also you can go and 
just, well, I can't go or you can't go, but he can go on in here and just, you know, poke his little head out and burrow down in there and he can go underneath here. And it just allows a little bit of um, enrichment, also makes the enclosure look a little bit nicer, it offers more hiding places, which will make him feel secure. The thing that you need to know about fire skinks is that they are a very shy species and that they need to feel safe and secure. So you need to provide enough substrate and plenty of hiding places. Right here in front of his driftwood, we have a bowl. It's actually a cat bowl. It has little birds on it for some reason, but um, I just liked that it was a wide bowl that he could really get into and it will accommodate him as he grows. Of course, I have substrate in here because I knocked it in there earlier. Just scoop that on out. Anyways, I usually put dubia roaches in here or superworms or mealworms. His absolute favorite thing to eat so far has been superworms, so he really responds to those. He hasn't shown a real great interest in dubias. He will eat mealworms if they're offered, but he definitely prefers superworms. This amazing plant right here is a fern. It's made by Exoterra. It's the size medium, which is the larger of the two sizes, and I absolutely love it. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. I was like, oh, is it going to look fake? Is it going to not bend well? And it honestly turned out so much better than I thought, and I even have one in my cave gecko enclosure now and I'm buying two more, one for the cave gecko and one for Roku here. I'm gonna, like I said, put it over here. I really, really love it. This is what it looks like from underneath. It offers plenty of like dark space for him to go ahead and hide when he's traveling between his food bowl and his water bowl and the back of the enclosure. It just offers a lot more security. Like I said, they like to feel safe in their enclosure and they like to know that nothing's gonna come down and snatch them. Like I said, it offers more shadowy hiding places too so he can feel safe when passing from one end of the enclosure to the next end. Back here we have his water bowl and because he's so small still, I have a, a little dish in here that he can like climb up on to get out and in safely. The water is not very deep. As you can see, it doesn't even reach my second knuckle, so he's totally fine. He's not going to drown or anything. And in addition to the water bowl, I also have a humid hide, which is just sphagnum moss underneath of a cork round, have a hut, whatever these things are called. I don't know. I got it from the pet store, but yeah, that's his little humid hide. I haven't seen him go in it yet, but it's also somewhere he can go and climb on top of and enjoy himself that way. This plant, I forgot to say, is from Petco. And it's like in the leopard gecko or reptile section or whatever. I've had it for a long time and just never put it to use until now. All right, so I think that's everything aside from the fact that this is an exoterra. It is an exoterra that is, let's see, 36 inches long by 18 inches deep by 18 inches wide. Like with all of my other diurnal species, I offer my fire skink a mega ray bulb that offers heat as well as UVB. In my experience, these are the best bulbs for diurnal species that require UVB and heat, and so that's what I use. This is a 70 watt one, and you can find it from a number of retailers, including Amazon and actually from Mega Ray themselves. So that's it. That's everything, I believe. And this isn't like a care tutorial or anything. This is just, just an enclosure. So don't take everything I said, like it's absolutely positive, you know, this is how I keep him and there are definitely other ways to do it, but here you go. This is my enclosure for my fire skink, which will change a bit as he gets older and grows into his full size, which right now he is nowhere even close to. When he gets older, I actually want to put in a functioning waterfall system with a siliconed off section of actually water. So that'll be fun, but he's too small for that right now. And I would also like to add more substrate when he gets bigger, but for now, this is literally plenty. I can never find him if I need to, so this is plenty. But yeah, that's it, guys. That's the entirety of the enclosure. Hello, everyone. It's nice and early this morning. About once a week, I take his bowl of water and I mix it around with his substrate to keep it moist. So that's what I'm doing this morning. And eventually I'll find him and then you'll see him on video. But he likes to hide, so the bar would be very last. Ooh, cool. It held a lot of its moisture. Oh, there's the probe. So where's my skinky? Here he is. So this is my skink, everybody. It's okay. That's him. He's afraid of me. <laughs> but he's getting nice and big. Look how big he's getting. That's okay, Bubba. That's all right. I'm not gonna hurt you. In all these months, I have not hurt you. <laughs> Bye, bud. So I hope you thoroughly enjoyed looking at my Skink's new enclosure. It is uh, a work of art. When I look at it, I'm just like, ah, 
because a lot of my enclosures they can't have like eco earth you know because they're leopard geckos and i don't keep leopard geckos on eco earth but for a burrowing species such as a fire skink they need humidity they need somewhere to burrow so the eco earth is what i chose and it just looks really cool like it looks really natural and the exoterra background's cool and the cork bark and the driftwood and all the themes of that being pulled together it just looks really amazing and i love how it turned out and i also have other upgrades i'll be posting so keep an eye out for those thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed please subscribe subscribe, check out the links below, leave a comment, hit the bell, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!